Hi, this is Darren Shade. Uh, welcome to my next Photoshop tutorial. What we're going to do this week is dissect this image that I shot. Uh, I took it in the studio. Uh, actually, the main part of the image I took in the studio, and then the the buildings I shot uh, out on location driving around Tucson. Um, as you can see, he kind of has a nice soft light on him, and the shadow of the uh, the awnings uh, in the background, especially over here on the uh, left, you can see there. Very, very hard edge shadows, uh, obviously shot midday sun. Um, bring that up a little bit. Midday sun um, creates a little bit of uh, a cartoonish superhero, uh, you know, unsettling feel, I guess I, I would call it, where uh, the shadows don't match between different parts of the image. You know, it, it, it does, you know, under close scrutiny, it's obvious that it's, that it's not real, but, uh, but it does create a cool effect that's real popular right now. So, okay, on to the Photoshop file. Uh, what I did is I shot this of a building in Tucson. We don't have a lot of very narrow alleys like I wanted, so I had to create my own. And what I did is I took this image of a building that I shot specifically for this image, and I uh, just went ahead and flipped it. And then I used the layer mask and, uh, and uh, got rid of the overlap part a little bit. Uh, and now you see that it's an entirely symmetrical sky. It's an entirely symmetrical image uh, built as far as the building is concerned. So I decided to drop in another image of a building that uh, I shot on the same day. Dropped it in right there and uh, used, used the mask and, and cleaned it up. And, and now it looks like a, uh, uh, a separate building. Like there's two different buildings that are very similar on both sides of the street. Uh, one of the things that I'm not going to go over in this tutorial because I want to keep it uh, under 10 minutes is I'm not going to discuss uh, exactly how I use the layer mask and how I uh, cut things out. If, if you need help with that, there are a lot of tutorials available or you can leave a comment in the comment section and I'll, I'll go over different ways that you can do that in uh, upcoming tutorials. Okay, so the next thing that's a problem is the sky. You know, the sky, it's, it's cool looking, but it looks entirely fake and it doesn't work with this dark nighttime image that we're looking to create. So I shot the sky at the same time. In fact, you can see over here on the left side, you can see the awnings of the building. I was basically standing under those awnings shooting up and I underexposed the sky by a couple of stops. I wanted that dark, uh, moody, uh, nighttime feel. Uh, so I went ahead and pasted that in there and again, using the layer mask just uh, made it fit. So now we kind of have a darker nighttime ominous sky looking uh, image and a pretty cool series of the buildings that, that you can tell that they're the same building, but uh, you know that's because you're looking closely. In the background, um, you see those two trucks. Again, our uh, main, main image is going to go over top of that, so it uh, uh, won't be a problem. And let's drop that in. Uh, one one thing that I want to point out about uh, shooting Justin in the studio on the uh, cyclorama is I didn't like the psych. I I don't want a stark white background to cut out from, uh, largely because you get a little bit of uh, uh, of uh, bleed on the edges, and it makes it more difficult to make it fit. So using kind of a medium gray or you know somewhere somewhere in the grays rather than uh, white can actually help. Uh, that blending, uh, because if you you know if you don't quite get all the pixels and it's a gray background, it doesn't jump out the way white does. Um, and then when it bleeds over, uh, you know gray doesn't bleed onto white. White I mean gray doesn't bleed onto the coat. Uh, white could. So uh, again, I cut that out using a layer mask. Uh, I always use layer masks. I don't delete anything. Uh, the main reason for that is. I never get it right the first time, so I have to go back and, and tweak it. Um, I can also rough something out and, and confirm that, that I want it to look like that before I spend all the time and, and uh, you know, go and delete every pixel. Well, I just kind of rough it out uh, with the mask and fill it in. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to darken the outside edge a little bit. I wanted uh, to make it more of a, uh, an ominous nighttime feel. So I darkened it, and then I created a little bit of a, uh, a, gl a lighter area glow just around him by, uh, by using the layer mask and just masking out that uh, level adjustment. 
as you can see the level adjustment all I did was I take took the middle slider and I brought it up to about 0.75 the uh, the next thing I wanted to do is you know this is starting to look like a cool image but it still doesn't feel like nighttime at all so I wanted to add a little bit of that blue moonlight feel uh, so again I used a uh, photo filter and made you know use a dark blue or deep blue photo filter created kind of the effect I was looking for but again we kind of ruined ruined his look because the, the blue light on him just doesn't work so I took a brush and uh, used the layer mask and just masked out most of him now I wanted a little bit of that blue light on his uh, shoulders and on the edges of his coat and on his hat because it kind of completes the look if, if he was totally uh, not treated the same way he, it would look more fake than it actually than it than it does the way I did it. Uh, so what I did was uh, just uh, delete that, you know, uh, mask out some of that blue down his torso, let his jacket still kind of go into that the blue. So it looks it almost looks like he's lit from two different sources. Um, but you know, again, if you look real closely, you can tell that it isn't. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to accentuate some of the highlights uh, and really kind of bring out his skin tones and the highlights in the jacket and make it really kind of pop. And this is where I think the image really starts coming together. Uh, the first thing I did was I used an exposure adjustment and I increased the exposure by one little over like uh, almost one and a third stops. Then I went with my uh, layer mask and I filled it with black so that it was back to the normal, the normal color that you didn't see any of that increased exposure. Then with my white paintbrush I just went in and painted highlights and as you can see it really kind of brings them up and pops you know I, I hit the highlights on his jacket um, on his hat uh, of course you know on his muscles and just kind of increase the overall uh, uh, tonality of the image and it really kind of makes it pop I, I hope you agree with me that uh, that's where it really starts popping and becoming a, a cool image from something that's that's alright to uh, to uh, wow that's really kind of hot. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to darken the shadow so I did the exact opposite. I, uh, I went in and I dropped the exposure by two and a half stops and again went with a, uh, a black layer mask and then I started painting in white uh, the things that I wanted to be darker and that came to look like this. Now we're st starting to really get the the nighttime feel the uh, the the thug the dark alley feel of the image uh, and then for for web use I uh, I tried different crops and what I typically do when I when I want to try a different crop is uh, uh, I use a mask I just create a black it, uh, create a, uh, an area I highlight it with uh, the selection tool and uh, select the inverse paint everything black so I can see what it's going to look like uh, in a you know a web view uh, because like, for example some websites um, you need a certain aspect ratio so like on my own I have a two to two to three aspect ratio on the images that uh, are in my uh, my leaderboard so that's pretty much it um, I hope that uh, you learned something I know I went pretty quickly but I wanted to keep the uh, video as short as possible and uh, Again, visit my website, www.darrenshade.com. Thank you.